Well, as you can see, I'm sitting here in my TV room, and I'm actually organizing and reorganizing a shelf of Blu-rays and DVDs, and I thought, you know what, why not come on and kind of document my collection? It occurred to me as I was sitting here doing this that I don't have a big collection, but it's kind of odd. A couple weeks ago, I had a friend over, and he sort of looked at it and said, you know, how could you have this stuff. This the, this is such a mishmash uh, of interests that, you know, it doesn't make any sense. And, yeah, that's all well and good. I know some people really are in love with one kind of genre, one kind of, you know, one actor, one actress, something like that. But, yeah, as I'm going through it now, it does look, uh, you know, it's kind of an interesting cornucopia of all the different interests that I've had over the course of my life. So I figured, why not, uh, since I've got everything pulled out, sort of document uh, some of the films and other kind of interesting pieces that I have in the collection. So this is obviously not the highest production value in the world, kind of looking at my carpet here. And since I haven't really put them in any particular order yet, I'm just going to throw them in front of the camera and uh, then stack them up here on my left side and get to reorganizing them later. So. Again, this is, you know, no particular order. Uh, eight and a Half. This is an uh, interesting film. Um, Marcello Mastriani, one of my favorite actors, came to him kind of later in life. And this is not really my favorite film that he's in. Uh, this is uh, honestly a kind of uh, boring, uh, if not psychologically interesting, look at the inner life of a director as he kind of tries to... Uh, realize his latest masterwork and he's got a kind of director's block if you will uh, but you know it's a classic a lot of people think it's one of the most brilliant films ever made certainly worth watching but just didn't do it for me and let's see here next up we've got uh, Cache this is a Michael Haneke film and as uh, this guy pointed out, I'm the only, probably the only person in the world that has a collection of uh, Michael Haneke films right next to Star Trek and the history of Starcade from WCW. And yes, that's probably true. Um, but really, really good movie. Perhaps, uh, it's certainly not my favorite Haneke film, but certainly one of them. Uh, it sort of revolves around a family who is under surveillance, and no one knows exactly who is spying on the family and in there, particularly the husband's obsessive pursuit to find out who it is, uh, his sort of whole dark backstory of a life uh, gets unraveled. So uh, fascinating film. I would highly recommend it. Ghost in the Shell, solid state society. You know, I do have to admit that uh, a lot of these films I have not seen in uh, quite some time. So I saw the, I got the Ghost in the Shell Blu-ray, uh, the 2.0 Blu-ray when it came out, and I really liked that. I had seen that with a friend years ago, and so then I just saw that this one was on sale, and, uh, you know, it was not remarkable. It's another kind of Ghost in the Shell tale. Now, some of these don't really need any commentary. You have obviously have the Star Wars trilogies. I know a lot of people hated these uh, Blu-ray releases because I guess there were some CG scenes. Uh, didn't bother me. It's just nice to have in the collection. And going through uh, Princess Mononoke. Um, obviously one of the Studio Ghibli classics, although not my favorite. I thought actually uh, it was, in a sense, a kind of retelling of the Nausicaa film, and I thought Nausicaa dealt with a lot of these themes uh, in a more compelling way. But nonetheless, gorgeous movie to have, and a film that is fairly recent, uh, The Chinese Puzzle. Now, uh, The Chinese Puzzle is the third in a trilogy uh, of films by a guy named Cedric uh, Clapiche, who's a French director, uh, a kind of comedy. This is a trilogy that 
uh, traces uh, the lives of college roommates from about 2002 to 2012. Again, this is the last uh, last installment, and very very funny. Uh, sort of takes place in New York as this uh, sort of main character, uh, Xavier, uh, gets divorced. His wife runs off uh, to some in investment banker in New York, and he tr goes there and tries to live the immigrant life to see his kids. Uh, you do need to see the other two films, I think, to truly appreciate the story, but a very good film. Now for this uh, next batch, I'm not going to pull out the whole collection uh, just because they're a little bit fragile these days, but uh, the Deep Space Nine box set. Now I had picked up uh, the Deep Space Nine box set, um, well, probably about 12, 15 years ago, and I mean not 15 years ago, uh, maybe 10 to 12 years ago, and these, this thing was really expensive. It was like 800 bucks to get seasons one through seven, and uh, I did it, uh, not all at once. Uh, they are used, but a uh, really fun box set. I think this was the best Star Trek series by far. Um, I know it was a little dark for some people, but I thought it, it kind of built on the galactic political tensions that emerged in the better uh, Next Generation episode, or Next Generation episodes in that series. And uh, really wove it into just uh, an amazing uh, tale for Star Trek. Now, uh, it does get better. The first three seasons are a little weak. But seasons, I would say, four through seven are tremendous. And Dr. Strangelove. This is a uh, favorite of my father's. And he got it for me for Christmas uh, well, about a decade ago. Uh, very, very funny movie. Uh, kind of playing on some of the paranoias and absurdities of Cold War politics. Um, brilliantly acted, brilliantly conceived. Uh, one of the, probably one of the best comedies uh, ever made, if you even want to consider it a comedy. And that's the brilliance that sort of straddles the line between critique and comedy. And growing up in northern New Jersey, uh, Goodfellas, of course, was required viewing. And uh, this is a particularly bad cheap DVD release. Uh, I'll have to pick it up on Blu-ray at some point. But uh, yeah, this, I mean, is all-time classic. What else can you say about it? Now, this is where it gets a little interesting. Uh, I have several, I'm not going to pull them all out, uh, Phil Collins uh, concert DVDs. These, uh, it's kind of perhaps embarrassing to admit that I was a Phil Collins fan. And I, I have to say that I'm not so much a fan of the music per se, but it just is kind of the, the first uh, musician that I remember. And I guess my parents played him all the time uh, in the 80s, and so there's just a nostalgia factor to it. Uh, I don't say I don't really go around listening to his stuff. Um, and uh, talking about embarrassing uh, musical interests, uh, why not throw in Meatloaf? Yes, Meatloaf... Um, I had some British friends uh, when I was studying abroad, and they introduced me to Meatloaf. And for a span of about three or four years, once I got back to the States, uh, he was uh, shockingly still performing, or perhaps not shockingly, he needed the money. Uh, and I went to see him, went to a couple concerts, and bought some Meatloaf DVDs. Uh, continuing in the string of pathetic interests, uh, the complete history of the New York Jets, uh, only requires uh, one disc, uh, fittingly. Uh, terrible franchise, uh, wasted way too much time in my youth caring about this despicable team, and uh, I feel like a burden has been lifted now that I simply don't give a fuck. Continuing on with the uh, Star Trek, I do have the Borg fan collective. This is... Um, just a compilation of all of the Borg episodes from TNG all the way through to Enterprise. You know, it was a great story arc, and it's just nice to have it all collected here. Now, these next three, uh, Leonard Cohen. I'm a, uh, well, kind of a, a big Leonard Cohen fan. I'm going to get this one out of here. This is not very good, um, but uh, this, push this in the frame here, 
This is uh, one of the first Leonard Cohen uh, movies. It's a kind of CBC documentary about his early life. It was really good. Uh, and this is one of his later concerts uh, in London. Uh, also, uh, excellent performance, uh, good quality audio. The one I kicked out was a sort of documentary ostensibly about Leonard Cohen, but really just about a couple of you know, hipster folk singers interpreting Leonard Cohen. It wasn't uh, very good. I was a big fan of George Carlin, and I think this is the release that he had right after, geez, maybe the 9-11? Was this, this, I think this was his show after 9-11. Uh, really good. Um, big time wrestling fan, and so when this came out, Beyond the Mat, I uh, had to get it. Really, really compelling documentary. It's uh, obviously aged a little bit, but you know, I guess for the time, 2000s, early 2000s, you know, right after the wrestling boom, I remember being sort of uh, shocked to see this. Now, this is a bootleg, um, Ghost in the Shell, but it has uh, the second movie in it, so I... I'm assuming this is a bootleg, but it was the only way I could get my hands on the second Ghost in the Shell movie. And we're going to jump into some Blu-rays. I'm not a big Hollywood movie fan, uh, but Syriana, uh, one of the best movies Hollywood has ever made, in my opinion. It sort of captures the logic of economic and geopolitical intrigue and you know how, how it plays out in the lives of people whose only connection uh, is the economic system from kind of poor migrants uh, in Pakistan who go to Saudi Arabia and are radicalized all the way through you know American corporate criminals, uh, CIA investigators, uh, investment bankers, things like that. Just a, a, a movie with an amazing vision and I'm kind of shocked that it was uh, produced and this next one Casino this is a movie I obsessed over uh, in high school I remember seeing it uh, in the basement of a uh, friend's house uh, kind of uh, he, he, he was this um, a Cuban guy and his uh, father was very strict and, and wouldn't let him sort of see or view anything uh, but the guy had this huge TV. It was like the biggest TV I'd ever seen and just a movie collection. And he just obsessively bought movies and never really watched them. Didn't really know what they were about. So uh, one day we popped in Casino and we were just blown away by this this movie. I mean, it's a, you know, a lot of people call it uh, Goodfellas Gone West. And to a certain extent, that's true. But it is, uh, you know, just, just some classically funny spots, some uh, horrendously violent spots, and just a, a movie that kind of defined my youth. V for Vendetta, uh, another uh, kind of interesting take on uh, what revolution might look like in a dystopian future, which arguably we're already inhabiting. Uh, then that having been said, it's not that great a movie, but kind of interesting to have in the collection. The Wrestler. Uh, the Wrestler, a movie that uh, was a really good movie. Uh, I wanted to see it for the longest time. Went to see it uh, in the theaters and in the scene where the wrestler is having a heart attack, uh, someone in the theater had a heart attack and uh, we had to evacuate and, and so I, I was only able to finally finish it on the blu-ray release but really good movie uh what else 2010 the year we make first contact garbage uh that having been said 2001 a space odyssey uh, absolutely remarkable um restoration i had seen this i guess when i was a bit younger i didn't quite understand it but when you actually look uh, at the work that they did to restore this movie. And, you know, you see it like on an OLED screen, you know, with the pure blacks. It's just absolutely incredible. Uh, and, you know, what else can I say? R remarkable movie. Next up, 
The Lives of Others. Uh, if you haven't seen this, this is a um, German movie. I think it came out 2006, and um, I don't know that the director ever made another film, but this is an absolutely remarkable movie about uh, an East German spy uh, who's kind of given a, the job of eliminating uh, a playwright, uh, sort of trumping up charges against this playwright so that uh, someone in the, some higher up in the Communist Party can move in on his girlfriend, but in the process he sympathizes uh, with this couple and uh, really, really well done. Highly recommended. Now, rounding out the rest of this Blu-ray shelf, um, Mickey's Christmas Carol. Now, the reason why I have this is that this, that cartoon was my earliest memory of any cartoon or perhaps any movie. And this was shown to me when I was in elementary school. They would sort of bring you in early and they sort of sit you in the auditorium and they have a big projection television and played various kinds of cartoons. And this is the first one that I remember, so it was pretty cool to find it on Blu-ray. What else do we have here? I'm not going to... I've got some UFC discs. Um, Baraka. This um, I got because it's someone said that this was uh, you know one of the most uh, ambitiously filmed movies it's a kind of visual doc journeys type of documentary um it's sort of uh, it says here 8k master um but yeah it's, it's an impressive blu-ray it, it it has a very kind of um I would say, simplistic, sort of left-wing message to it. It sort of comes off as, a, as an unrefined critique uh, of uh, modern society, uh, sort of derivative and predictable in its layout, but uh, there are some scenes that are absolutely beautiful to look at. Get this last stack. Blade Runner. A lot of people like Blade Runner. I appreciate what Blade Runner attempted I appreciate the sort of atmosphere that it created and how influential it was on other sci-fi films. That having been said, as a story and as uh, you know, as far as the performances go, not a very compelling movie. But of course, cinematography and impact um, can't go wrong with it. This is the Ghost in the Shell that I picked up on Blu-ray. I know a lot of people don't like this because of the CG, uh, the CGI stuff, but. You know, I got it for eight bucks, and it was uh, sort of brought me back to some of my earlier days of watching anime. Now, another film that people hate is Prometheus, and I actually enjoyed it. And this is going to uh, upset uh, anyone who has watched this and who's gotten this far into it. I've never actually seen the Aliens trilogy, although, no, I shouldn't say that. I saw... Maybe the first one on television, but it didn't really do anything for me, and I just never really bothered to see the others. But uh, Prometheus, I thought, was a reasonable science fiction movie. Um, what else do we have? Two classics, Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. Um, just a beautiful uh, film, and I could imagine seeing this. I guess it came out in 84, 82, something like that, seeing this type of animation in the theater. Must have been awesome. And Akira. Uh, this, uh, again, another anime classic and a film that um, I think has, uh, you know, a lot of narrative inconsistency. But to me, back then, you know, when I, I saw it when I was much younger, and now uh, it's the world. It's, it's the world. You know, a lot of 80s, 90s anime, to me, what it did... Uh, perhaps better than um, anime today and, and even better than certain sci-fi films back then was it created a world, it created an atmosphere, it created a sense of place with the tremendous artwork 
that you just didn't get anywhere else. And so uh, this, to me, was a movie uh, that was really at the forefront of that kind of work.